So I wanted to start this conversation by talking about something I've noticed for a long time, and I think more so since um, the emergence of social media, and is that, for example, um, I will go uh, into one of the social media networks, like Instagram, and I will see someone sharing about uh, their business or their life, and I, like if I put a, a specific example, like let's say that someone shares on my Instagram a picture of their partner and they are all loving and in love. And from that little frame, I suddenly create a whole movie. And it's a whole movie of perfection, which I also create the soundtrack of that movie. So I imagine how they might feel constantly so they constantly feel that way. And, and then I evaluate that against my own film. So I compare their movie with my movie. But it's not very objective because when I look at my movie, I'm looking at it from the feeling I have from that comparison. So I'm feeling a bit, uh, I don't know what's the feeling actually. bitter maybe and so then i'm comparing their whole movie of perfection with the perfect soundtrack like how amazing that experience is how good it feels to how am i feeling right now so it's not it's not a very fair <laughs> evaluation that i'm doing but in that moment it feels really real because you know that's 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 what I, i'm creating in my head so it feels absolutely real that their perfect life looks um, great in comparison with mine, which, which is not true in the sense that I cannot know how they are feeling all the time, can I? And I cannot know what's happening in their life beyond that frame, but I create that, I make all that up. <laughs> Anyone else have done that? That have they have look at a picture and hands up, yes. <laughs> yes I'm, glad to, I'm glad I'm glad to hear. Um, so it's a very interesting phenomenon. And um, so what I do is sometimes I catch myself starting to create that and I pull myself away from it. And then sometimes I'm just into the movie. So it takes me a while to catch up and say, Hang on a minute, you are completely lost in creating this story. Uh, wait, wait. Let, me, let me accept another Maria Mayor. <laughs> well, or I, can, I can do that, Maria, if you want to carry on. Thank you. So, yes, yeah, so that's, this is, the, this is what I wanted to share, what happens when you compare yourself or evaluate yourself with what others are presenting, whether in their business or their lives, um, and you feel like there's something lacking in your life, there's something missing. So by doing that, I'm taking, a, I'm taking myself away from my own feelings of well-being and contentment. And innocently, I think that if I get what they have, I will feel fulfilled, right? But I'm already fulfilled. But somehow I get myself into the trap. Like something's lacking because I compared this perfect movie with mine. So if I get that, I will be happy. Hi, Linda. It's Linda Lamus, Santa Clara County showing up. All right, good. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I I wanted to share. I wanted to share that and Gabriela is going to share, I think, the flip side of that, right? Gabriela, the other side of that coin, because we can compare ourselves and feel like something's lacking. And then we can also compare ourselves to others and feel that we are doing great. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, right. And it's interesting because we were trying to figure out, <laughs> we have two points, bitterness and vanity. Okay. Maria took 
bitterness and I took sanity. <laughs> I think I was assigned that. But I wanted to, to talk a little bit about something, Maria, because when you were talking about we get one snapshot, right? One picture. Last night I was doing a, uh, I was gathering some pictures that somebody had asked me for, for a radio show that I'm doing tomorrow. And I was looking at my pictures from Spain, from our last trip. And there is one with a group, and there is one with Maria, and there's one by the beach, and there is one, you know, with whatever. And I'm looking at this, and I'm like, wow, if I share this, if I share these pictures, the storyline is you just have a great time. You're just by the beach all the time. You're just in sunny Spain all the time. You're not working at all. However, that's not true. So it was just so interesting for me even to choose pictures that were showing the storyline, right? And now we just share so much, so, you know, in uh, social media. But I was like, wow, I mean, no wonder. I mean, it's very easy to make up a whole story, a whole motion picture, as Maria was saying, based on a few snapshots. And we have a tendency, at least I have a tendency, to look at these pictures and create like a fairy tale, almost. When the reality of it is that the last two days that Maria and I were in Spain, we did not even come out of the hotel because we were working almost from seven in the morning to 11. So, you know, it's just very interesting, this idea of sharing media and just the, this habit that we have of looking at pictures and particularly the way we share because we tend to share photographs where it looks like it's divine you know the 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 group is all laughing and i mean some people don't share that way but the tendency really is to share these perfect moments and then we have this capacity to create a fairy tale in our head so it was very interesting for me to notice that oh. So we do that, right? We, do, we have this uh, capacity, like Maria was saying, to look at somebody else and then create the whole picture based on a frame. And then we start comparing to us. And there, we have that tendency to say, well, look, I wasn't in Spain. Uh, I may not have a partner. God, they look so happy and I don't look happy, right? And now all of a sudden we can be having a perfect day and now we're not, just based on the comparison. The other thing that we tend to do is we tend to compare ourselves to see how well we're doing against others. And one of the things that I learned very early on was that for me to be a good person, for me to be a kind person, I had to feel, in a, feel a certain way, think a certain way, do certain actions. So I learned that my value as a human being was very linked to what I thought, what I did, what I felt or what I didn't, okay, it was like, I had to compare how I was doing to see if I had value. And I think that's really common, you know, just like we, we are raised this way. We are raised to see, you know, uh, in school very early on, right? Look, uh, your brother is doing better than you or Mary, or you're doing, you're doing better than, you know, that everybody else. And so I learned that to create or to, not all the time, but to, to discern my value, I had to, to see how I was doing compared to the rest of the group 
and I had to excel. Which is not a bad thing until you use it to create your value as a human being. Okay. So what would start happening, and this I just discovered this actually this last decade of my life, is that I had created a very strict code of conduct for me. I had to be loving, I had to be kind. I come from a social services background, right? So I had to be loving and kind with every other human being all the time. And when I wasn't, there was something wrong. And there was this almost like this pressure of, why are you not doing that? So when I was doing that, it feels great, right? When we are doing better than others, because we're more kind, because we're more conscious, because we're more polite, because we are you know, more giving. We get a feeling of being good, right? And this is a tricky, this is a tricky one for us, I think for those of us that come from the background of social services and wanting to contribute to the world because we are taught that this is a good thing, but it can become a source of pride and vanity because innocently we can start feeling a little bit more elevated because we are more conscious than other people, because we're more spiritual than other people. So there's that, and there is the going into the group. Maria, do you wanna share the example that you shared with me about when you became a vegetarian? Gabriel Maldonado, why did you do that to me? <laughs> you can say no. Well, when I became a vegetarian, I noticed that I had an attitude of, oh, I'm better than others because, you know, I take care of the environment and animal suffering and I'm more conscious. So it, it was a bit invisible, but I catch up with, uh, with it and, and it was getting in the way of listening to other points of view, right? And I've noticed that now that's completely gone. Like I don't... I don't have that sense, but for a little bit, I did have that sense of, you know, it's no greater than vegetarian or vegan, or I don't eat meat, which is interesting. So we just wanted to point out that even the best of intentions can really uh, derail us a little bit because we start getting a sense of value sometimes even a little being a lit a about our point of view our politics so i don't know if anybody does that but you know <laughs> we are in this country in the states right now we are so connected to our own politics and whatever your politic is whatever your political view is there is a sense of we are better than you. And so it's been really interesting how our value as a human being is compared against the created ideal, how our value even when you're trying to excel and even when you're trying to get better, right? Which is it's beautiful. We as human beings want to do better, except the only problem is that when we start using that to get this sense of we are better than other people, particularly with the good deeds, particularly with being kind, particularly with wanting to be um, respectful or more aware, and it can be quite painful. For me, it has been actually the last few years 
it was really painful because I realized that I had this impossible thought about how I had to do all the time. And it was pretty much like, I have to be loving and I have to be kind with every human being in every situation, no matter what. And if you're not, there's something wrong. So I had taken the very nature of being a human being, which is want to be kind and want to be loving, and I had made it an ideal that was just impossible to live up to. So we wanted to present this, this point of vanity in this way to you because we know that there are many of us that are trying to contribute to have a better world and that we are trying to contribute just to the, the well-being of our families or to the well-being of our communities. And there can be a invisible tendency at times, particularly when we encounter people that have an opposite point of view. And then we'll feel their resistance, right? But their resistance is showing up because there's something in us that feels we might be just a little bit more elevated than the rest. How is this uh, settling for you? What are you hearing? I'd love to to hear what's resonating for you. Right. Faces are being made. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I recognize what you've both said very much and um, uh, recognize those different thought processes happening when I encounter people's, um, the content that people share on social media. Um, and also maybe when I'm talking, just talking with people in real life as well, and um, and noticing my inner reactions to things. I think is uh, and and the way that I am positioning that against my own conceptions of myself and my own position and what where I am. So I, I uh, very much recognise what you are saying as being something I. I am working on. You know, Danny, this is, it's a, uh, are you, no, wait, what's your name? Danny or Christy? Danny, me, okay. Danny, so you know, it's, I'm glad that you said that because it seems like it's a common human ability. You know, it seems like as human beings, we do that. We can have a tendency to measure up or measure down. Go ahead. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> it's interesting because in some ways it's problematic because it creates a lot of anxiety. Um, on the other hand, I can see how in some ways it might be a positive thing. You know, if you're able to look at someone else and recognize that they're doing something that you admire or that you aspire to in some way that helps you to raise your own game as it were um there's this idea in sporting in a sort of sporting context that if you train with someone who is better than you or on the same level and better than you uh you both become better at, at what you're doing and so i wonder if it's partly a mechanism about developing yourself by connecting to someone and comparing yourself in a way that should be quite, that shouldn't be damaging, it shouldn't be too anxiety inducing as a way to actually help you raise your own um, potential, maybe. 
Okay, so you said something really important. So I, you know, when Maria and I and Katie were talking, we started talking about comparison sort of in a negative way. Because we read this poem and we really like this poem. I really like this poem. But then we realized, wait a second, comparing is something we're doing all the time. And one of the things that we use comparison is just exactly how you mentioned, right? Because it can be inspiring or it can be spirit crushing. So one of the things that we realized is that if we were to notice that feeling state of, well, yeah, this is inspiring me versus, wait, my spirit is getting crushed here, that that would be very helpful because then it can help us discern if we're having a neutral state of mind, right? Just kind of a neutral thing, like this person, I don't know, this and that, better or whatever, I don't know. Versus this person can't that better, or what does it mean about me? I guess that that's really, when Maria and I were preparing is, that's really, the trick that at one point we stop looking at comparing in a neutral way and it is what does that mean about me and then we use it either to elevate all of that means that I am more developed because I'm vegetarian or that means that oh there's something wrong because I'm a vegetarian right so thank you Anyone else? Yo, Gab. Good morning. Hi, Linda. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. You talk about comparison and sports. You know, work with somebody who is at a higher level. They'll bring you up. You'll all get better. And so it occurred to me that that works if you believe you are capable, if you believe you're not inferior but equal to and just – haven't learned yet what they've learned as opposed to if you believe I can never get there, I can never get there. Um, then, um, you know, they either slow down to your pace or they leave you behind. Mm -hmm. But it also, also means that um, I learned this thing about acceptance this last year. It was like, just happened. I have no idea how it just happened. When I was backpacking on the Southern California section of the Pacific Crest Trail, and there were sections that were long and hot, and sections that were snowy and rainy and cold, and I mean everything in between from A to Z, and going up the hills, the pack was like heavy. And then one day, I don't know, I just accepted the trail. I accepted everything. It it threw at me, and I was still hard. I was still tired, hurt you know, no days, never like that. And then I went over to the Camino um, in Spain, Camino del Norte, and that's considered one of the more um, challenging, physically challenging ones. And I experienced the same thing. It's like, oh, something shifted. Not that it was made it easier, but mentally, um, I, I was experiencing this thing of acceptance. And so when we compare you know, we're not accepting, mm. you know, we're not being in the, we're not, but, um, cause before I was kind of comparing myself to all these 20 somethings. It's like, man, if I could only be back down, you know, 20, 30 years old, you know, it's so easy from them and blah, blah, blah. It's like, and I was just laughing later because, um, I mean, I basically was, making my miles and coming in a little later to camp but hey you know i just persevered a little bit more it took me a little bit longer but it was no longer comparing mm. you know it was it was an acceptance and no longer um you know yeah it was just it was just odd i think it's because the principles after all these years was still kind of working inside of me and i was taking all those lessons and all those classes and it you know, someplace along the line, it was, it was all kind of coming together in a few places. But that was, you know, we tend to have these, these insights in different areas of our lives. And it's generally uh, uh, not the case that we get a 360 degree thing on it. 
So, um, and that was, that came up this morning. I do a meditation on Monday morning with some people, but this whole thing about acceptance um, came up and it's a comparison of self to self basically is, am I living my life? You know, do, has my life, does my life have purpose and should I be doing more? That's a big one, right? Should I be doing more? So I'm comparing myself, not only myself, but other selves and other people. And it's like you said, Gab, we're looking um, and created this ideal about who we are and are we gonna be accepted? Mm -hmm. And at a deep level, we believe we need to be accepted to survive. Our survival depends on our acceptance by whoever we deem you know, necessary for our survival. Maybe even physically our survival. As a, as a child, it's your parents. If I don't feel accepted by them or I feel I have not been accepted, my survival is, you know, is not guaranteed. So for the moment we're born, we're looking for acceptance to be part of the, you know, to become. And then ultimately, we're seeking the oneness. That's not acceptance. So we're looking for oneness in this material form-filled word world through acceptance because we feel it's necessary to survive. And the thing that holds us, you know, in a lot of our stuff and a lot of our anxiety is the fear we not, we're not good enough, like you said. Right. We all define that differently. You know, we all have our image of what that should look like and what that should look like to people who we feel are important in our lives and we want to be accepted and we want to be part of them, you know. And so the other thing that occurred to me this morning was what we need, what I need to do is learn to live without fear. Live my life with, the only way to live my life with full purpose is to live, live it without fear you know, to live it fearlessly. And I'm not there yet. I don't know if I'll ever get there, but I do think that's, that's key. And that came up to me on the other, another Camino a number of years back. I was hiking in, in, um, in Portugal doing the Camino Portuguese. And it just kept going over my, over and over my head is no fear, no fear. So acceptance becomes more just, you know, I like hanging out with you, Gab, you know? So I'm not looking for your acceptance, but I'm just enjoying your company. You know, we yeah. find we have things in common, not acceptance. Right. But it's, it's a work in progress because like I said, never, I don't, you know, if I could ever see anything totally, completely 360 degrees, then maybe I'd be there. But those are just a couple of things that have been coming, that have been coming up for me the last year or so. It's interesting because this links what Linda, what you're just saying, I think it links to what Maria was just saying a little while ago is if we are accepting the moment, like, oh, this is a beautiful picture that mm -hmm. so-and-so posted with her loved one. Like if we're just in that, there's no issue. Right? There's no issue. And so this idea of just coming in this moment and saying where we are without the, 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 the history, without the motion picture starting to play in our minds can be so helpful. And then also, I think getting stuck for me, I, I, don't, um, I don't hate it. I've learned to appreciate it because it's so easy to get stuck in my mind and seeing that gives me great compassion for when other human beings get stuck in their, their mind as well. Hmm. Anyone else? I think Pam had her hand raised at some point. And then Nick, and then Nick, okay. Maybe Pamela. Mm. Well, at some point in this conversation, I was just thinking about um, 
something I think it pretty much got touched on, but I was thinking about how comparison can lead you to judgment. But I don't know if that's the direction you guys are interested in, in even, you know, talking about. <clears throat> so, do you want me to say more or no? Yes, yeah, please. please. Say whatever you want to say. Okay, so I was just thinking about when, when I, I don't know if it's necessarily comparing, though that's where I was getting as I was listening to Linda. <clears throat> but if I look at people's posts, it could be a Kardashian woman, or it could be a family member or a friend. Um, something happens in my thinking sometimes where um, I tend to judge it. Like, oh, they're so phony, or they're so this, or they're so that. And then that takes me down this rabbit hole of, um, it doesn't matter, it's a bunch of negativity, but the bottom is when I hit, it's, it's pulled me out of love and, and um, love and acceptance for sure, like Linda's talking about. So I think that I'm mostly talking about a middle step here. Linda got deeper. <laughs> and hi, Linda. That's all. Um, and it's interesting, Pam, because you had, you had a big insight after Maria shared something in a video that was, if you get judgmental, there is a possibility of not paying a lot of attention to your judgment. You remember what oh, I shared? Yeah. Do you want to share a little bit of that? Well, I wasn't specifically talking about judgment at that time, although I didn't add that. Anymore. I might speak. Your mic. Hold on. I think you touched the side of your computer or something. It says, it says I'm unmuted. Yeah, okay. Could you repeat that? Am I okay? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I don't think when I was talking on that video, I was thinking of judgment so much as just realizing the negative thought I had. But yeah, I guess I did say something about it being critical or negative, which is judgment. Um, yeah, it, it sets a person up to have all of these reactions then to the other person that they totally don't deserve because it's only coming out of your own head toward them. But the actions that follow aren't too um, conducive to having a loving relationship with whomever you're having the, the judgment or the criticizing or the comparing to. And what you realize is that you could have that and then it can pass and it doesn't have to really mean anything. Yeah, that was the bigger insight that I saw that, well, I think I've always automatically just moved into the reaction. You know, you have the thought, get the feeling and then boom, you're doing something. Um, and what I saw when I got that insight after listening to Maria was, Oh, I can have the thought and I can have the feeling, but it doesn't have to be boom, react. There is a nanosecond in there where I can go, oh, I don't have to pay attention to that thought because it is just a thought. But before, I wasn't seeing it quite like that. It just was a natural thing. And now I'm seeing it more as it's make-believe. It's the movie. It's the movie. We just need more commercials, <laughs> commercial breaks, <laughs> so we can get out of it. <laughs> I mean, that happens to me in real movies. I'll be watching these darn things, like right now we're watching Designated Survivor, and both my husband and I are going, we got to quit watching. This is too stressful. We're totally sucked in. And I, we have to make our own commercial by leaving the TV set and, sh you know, stopping the, the streaming. <laughs> Nick. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I mean, I totally um, 
associated with both what you and Gabriela, you Gabriella and uh, Maria were talking about. And when Linda started talking about acceptance, I realized that um, I have a whole load of hidden comparisons that, um, well, it was actually, I had a, a session with Jack a few weeks ago that helped bring the comparisons that I was doing into the light that I was really unaware I was doing. And one, one of the areas that is really big for me that, um, you know, Linda was alluding to it in, in her hiking, but for me, it's in, in terms of my um, physical ability um, because of a health challenge. And, you know, I'll see, I'll see some Facebook ad for some exercise thing, or I'll see some, some dancers on Facebook on a Facebook video. And, um, I can feel the two things, uh, the inspiration, the inspiration that that is what is possible for humans to do. And at the same time, I can, I can have, you know, as Pam was saying, a big judgment of myself that I can't do that or I haven't, um, or maybe I haven't tried hard enough to be able to do that or maybe I haven't looked after myself well enough um, or, you know, maybe I could have done something to have gotten my physical state better. Um, and most of the time, you know, I do have a level of acceptance, but it's just when it becomes, um, I, I don't know. There's, there's, there's just a, there's a quite a, a, a fine line between either being inspired or going into poor me. There's, um, yeah. I don't know. It's so easy to be inspired and so quickly you can move to like, oh, me, oh, yeah. oh yeah. poor me. <laughs> yeah. You know, it happens like, in a nanosecond, yeah, faster mm. than a Lamborghini, you know. But what really caught my eye, Nick, what you shared is this idea that we had about if I need to try harder, mm. you know. So with this, with this particular flavor of I need to be loving and accepting of every human being all the time, and when I'm not, what came. I guess an idea that came that really uh, at one point stopped serving me was to try harder. Mm. And it's like, it's almost like personal development, right? Like try harder. If you read more, if you see more about the principles, if you understand more about one, then this should not be happening. And I felt uh, a push, an internal push, that was not helpful. It, I felt very conflicted. Like I really need to try harder. And so it's interesting how when we're comparing ourselves, particularly if we feel bitter, one of the things we can do is, well, then I need to try harder. I need to do more. Which gets us exhausted <laughs> at mm. one point. This is like, you know, I mean, we are where we are. Again, what Linda said, right? We are where we are in the journey of life. We just are. Mm. This is where we are. And, and also for me, I think for, for there's been the... Because it, it's almost like I give up before starting. So the try harder is... Um, you know, there's a rebel part of me that that says, "Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to try that hard." So, therefore, I don't. I, I, I'm not quite sure what I'm trying to say, but there's, it's almost like there's this background of should do better, but I don't try harder. 
because because I'm rebelling against the should. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's mm. it, it it's kind of undermines even before you know just just having that as a background of not good enough. Just having that as a background means that I don't either get better or get worse. I mean, it's just yeah. I've seen, I've seen that um, with some of my clients that are artists, they will compare themselves to other artists, for example, on social media, and see, look how much they are producing, I'm never going to get to that level. Um, and sometimes they feel inspired by their part of the people's art, and that inspires their work. And sometimes they, they feel that comparison is taking them down. And what is been very helpful for them is to see that when they go into comparison, their own inspiration and their own wisdom gets clouded, mm. right? Because mm. you can look at other people's work to get inspired, but when that is taking you into a low mood, that starts, it stops serving you, right? And that's the moment that you can move away from it and look for your own inspiration to what you need to do next, not anyone else. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Katie, what do you have to say, Miss Katie Feeney? Oh, well, when I was thinking about comparison, it's really interesting to hear everybody's angles on this. My, my experience of comparison comes to me, it looks like, in whichever area of my life, and I can identify with, with pretty much all of the kind of scenarios that you've referred to, whether it's around health or activity or um, doing good deeds. Um, it looks to me like I'm on a ladder. So I have this sense of myself and a certain point on this ladder and um, there's either people above me or people below me or both. And so I'll make an assessment about how well I'm doing based on where I am on this ladder. Um, and if I'm at the top of the ladder, it tends to be the, uh, the pride and the validation, I've done well, isn't that great? Oh, look at these poor people beneath me. It's an awful thing to admit, but it's the patronised people. Um, and then if I'm at the bottom of the ladder, I may strive to climb up the ladder. And I may also not bother because I resign myself to the fate on the bottom of the ladder. Um, I may try and cling on to the place on the ladder that I'm at. Whichever one of those I'm doing, it takes a lot of effort. It takes up a lot of time. It takes a lot of headspace to try and work out what I should do, where I should stay, where am I positioned. And what's been really helpful for me um, when I start to feel, and I do experience bitterness and I experience pride and validation. And when I, when I experience any of those and and there's something feels a bit off about them. So the pride may have that smell of patronizing other people in order to, to have me in this elevated place. So there's something even in what might be considered a positive position that doesn't feel quite right. So I'll get suspicious about it. And it's been really, really helpful for me to understand the truth that the, that the circumstance of where I am on the ladder or of other people and where they are on their ladder or my ladder isn't saying anything, isn't what is creating my experience. My experience of life is, is created from the inside out. So if my reference points are social media or um, what other people are doing, or what I've created as, as the thing that will validate me as a human being or make me um, 
successful. If they look like they're outside of me or they're created as a movie, they're at, that, I, that looks like it's telling me something true, that I, that is creating my experience. When I understand that I'm at the only place that my experience can come from is my thought. And my thought is created from the inside out. And that thought is inextricably connected to my feeling. So even though it looks like the world out there is creating my experience, moment to moment, it's my thought that's creating it. So uh, my feelings that are connected to the thoughts I'm having about the circumstance, about my position on the ladder, about other people's lives, are not telling me something about the state of my life in comparison to other people or in comp comparison to my idea of how it should look. But it's telling me something about my state of mind in comparison to its default setting. So this natural, neutral um, default that we have as human beings, which is love and acceptance and fearlessness, for who we really are, joy and peace, is a, is a place where comparison doesn't occur to us. And when I was thinking about this ladder and about the truth of, of how my experience is created and who I really am, I thought, well, when, when I, when I, do remember how it really works and who I really am because often I get caught in comparison too on my ladder. When I remember that, the ladder looks like it's, it's horizontal. So it's no longer like this, it's lying flat on the ground. And many wisdom traditions talk about the horizontal plane and the vertical plane. And on the horizontal is our life experiences, our psych circumstances, the, the events of our life in their multitude and diversity. And the vertical is our level of consciousness, is, our, is what brings to life, it's, the, it's the, the, the thought that powers our life, the consciousness that brings to life those experiences. And the, the extent to which we live with joy and peace and ease and neutrality and fearlessness on the horizontal plane is connected to the extent that we understand the vertical plane. And so it becomes really, really helpful to know that that vertical plane exists and it, it's the space within us that is our neutral space of love and joy and connection without comparison. And from there we have the capacity to create anything and really play around on this, this horizontal plane and, and have a lot of fun, not in relation to what other people are doing, but based on what looks fun or wise or what makes sense to us in that moment. And it's really freeing and we're able to um, live our life and accept other people's lives with love and curiosity and, and engagement. So that's, that's how it looks to me. Katie, could you repeat, there was something you said that I felt really powerful. Mm. You said something like, the sense of judgment is not that we're comparing ourselves to others, but it's actually how we're doing, or how our state of mind is doing in regards to, oh my God, how did you say it? Um, A default setting. The default setting, yeah. Mm. Could you just tell me a little bit more about that? 
so yeah so 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 our feelings of, of bitterness maybe or or pride um are not telling us something about um how we're doing in the world compared to other people because our feelings are inextricably connected to our thought what they're telling us and pointing us towards is you could say the quality of our thinking or the extent to which our thinking is taking us away from our default setting which is this space of acceptance and joy fearlessness love inspiration Mm. Um, I wanted to add something on on um, the idea of a default setting, and it's something I've um, observed over the years of you know first discovering like social media when I was maybe fifteen, sixteen, and um, I'm twenty nine now, so I've I've, you know, half my life I've been used to pictures on a screen, comparing yourself and what I've, um, what I've realized over the years is that when you just have a picture or even just a message uh, on, on a chat, you have very, it's almost like you have, you're looking through a small hole mm -hmm. at a person and you just see a glimpse of what they're doing and what their life is. And that makes it very easy for you to start comparing and creating different scenarios. And the more layers you add, the more information you get. So you, rather than an image or a text, you have a whole video or you have a video call with them, a Skype call or even a phone call. As you add more information, that hole gets bigger and you get a better understanding. And as you make, um, as you go from very basic images and basic online interactions to a full conversation standing opposite someone, um, the whole picture unveils. And I find as you're going from that small hole to a whole picture, you come towards your default and when you're in a conversation with someone opposite they you know they can tell you about let's say marie's example of, of uh, being on a holiday in spain or, or about a relationship which they're so happy about and um, i find it much harder to make any judgments or comparison in that scenario when i'm standing opposite someone compared to if i'm just looking through that small piece uh, in a picture online so it's almost when when you're looking at a picture online of someone you've got this cloud of uncertainty or this this, this black space around the hole where you've got a really high chance of, of falling into these misconceptions and falling into these um, made-up comparisons I think the human brain is always trying to um, fill in the, the blanks and whatever you're looking at. And um, my, my feeling is that, the, you know, these, these uh, small snippets of people's lives make it easier to fall into those, um, uh, you yeah, know, to, to start drawing, drawing up uh, made up comparisons. That's just what I, what I wanted to add. Thank you, Christian. And you know that can happen outside of social media too. You can have just like a conversation or something. And it's just a snippet. It's just like a real, you know, like a small snippet. 
And as we start having more of a conversation, you get the sense of the whole, the whole person. And what's interesting is, you know, even the most loving relationships can have arguments, right? I mean, there seems to be just some normal experiences that we have as human beings. For those of us that didn't grow up with social media, you know, it's, it's really, for me, it's just really tricky because I just really kind of um, look at it and I forget often what you just said. So that was just a really nice reminder. Thank you. And um, I just, um, I just <clears throat> thought of something else I wanted to say is, you know, through, throughout my lifetime, I've actually, in the last few years, really stopped using social media, more or less. Um, and I think part of the reason is that my feeling is that if you, if you save conversations for the real human interaction, you get, it's so much more rewarding and you have a much more genuine response and much more genuine emotions. Um, and I, I almost feel like, you know, as much as nice as it is to see people's experiences and achievements, um, I feel like too often I fall into the trap of making these negative comparison and it, it taints pictures of other people um, which aren't really true. And I, maybe that's just my, my mind and the, the things I, uh, endure when I'm when I'm looking at things so um, it's almost like <clears throat> I've been practicing a way of um, avoiding thing avoiding these um, uh, these comparison and, and just wait till I see that person again in real life and then I can make a much more sound judgment I guess Liliana Bellini, do you have anything? <laughs> I have no shame. No, and you know what? It's very, it's very interesting. I, I've come on this and, and I kind of, I've been reflecting lately on uh, my relationship with the whole thing, you know, uh, social media and kind of the way I put myself uh, out there, the way I perceive others and, and sometimes I have a really hard time, you know, I think I put something and then for a day or two days, I'm like, why did you post that? <laughs> you know, it's like I really beat myself up and then and then it goes. Um, and then, um, you know, it's it's a it's a um, it's a relationship with some conflict, you know, that I have. And um and I agreed with what everybody said about it. And uh, it's funny because um, the moment I feel elevated, uh, my consciousness and the quality of my feeling changes. And, but equally, when I beat myself up, mm, the quality of the feeling changes. So it's almost as if the two are the same. So, and they're an indication that I'm not actually present. I'm where I think I should be, and so I'm happy about it, and or I'm not where I think I should be, and so I'm miserable about it, but then equally I'm not um, in presence. So I can uh, tell by the quality of the feeling where I'm at with it all, you know? And um, I like to think that what I put out is, um, or I tell myself, you know, that I, I try and share something that is of value of the for other people and maybe I do you know and hopefully I do but I am sure I also put out things just to look good you know <laughs> I'm sure that happens as well <laughs> you know I play with media I play with the whole thing and then I beat myself up and then I feel good and then I feel bad and then I love what other people are doing and then sometimes I, I hate them because they look too good so I have a whole <laughs> full-blown human experience of it and I don't think I'm done with it and sometimes I think come on girl get over it and leave it behind you know but I'm still playing a bit with it so um, I feel very human right now as I'm sharing it with you you know it's like um, 
uh, but the thing is, is um, uh, how I perceive it is also always 100% a reflection where I'm at with my, my own uh, state of mind, my own level of understanding, my own appreciation of the truth of how life works. And that kind of I know, but I forget, but I know, you know, so I can't, you know, this understanding doesn't allow me to kid myself that much. So, you know, I might like go along and judge or ask myself of others for a while. Then I snap out of it and think, come on, you know, wh where have you been with your state of mind? Look what's going on in that, at that level. <laughs> so, um, it's um, ultimately like um, I am seeking, um, uh, I'm seeking oneness. And when I'm in oneness, there's nothing like it. I mean, no amazing post will ever uh, give me that sense of peace or self kind of be okayness, you know. Um, and and I, I don't know. So I was just listening and kind of going along with every everything that you all said, and and then. And, and, see my own humanness in it all and uh, how I take myself so seriously sometimes um, and then of course uh, I, I, I move away from that feeling of oneness which is you know so I don't know <laughs> so, and I was listening to the gentleman who just said I moved away from um, uh from social media i think oh wow yes that sounds good i might just do that <laughs> um maybe i will um um uh, i don't i don't think i can ever get away i mean avoid that that comparison even if i'm not on social media you said you know I'm, I'm telling the story to myself that I'm doing online things now and I, I'm kind of, I'm in a, not in a comfortable place. I think I'm crap, but I'm doing them anyway because, you know, I want to share and I haven't been able to share the way I usually do with like, with people, right, you know, with them in person. So I have to get over my own insecurities and ideas that, oh, I'm crap online. I've got this thing going on. <laughs> um, but yeah, is, is it really different at the end of the day, you know? Or, or do we think it is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, one of the things that you said, Liliana, is this thing about being serious, right? That we get very serious, where we, whether we're comparing to whatever it is we're comparing, there is seriousness comes into the picture, right? And when we're more lighthearted, it's not a problem. It's just not a problem. So I just, I just wanted to rescue that point because I think you're absolutely right. It's, this seriousness comes in and we're like you know this is like life or death so i think that could be like a really nice uh helpful hint for for us how serious are we about this you know do we feel very strong about it or is it more lighthearted? the other thing that i wanted to mention is when katie maria and i started working together one of the things that it was really evident to the three of us is that we wanted to have a feeling of, of freedom in our soul. We wanted to experience and contribute to a feeling shameless and free in our souls. Um, we also came up with the, I'm going to ask you guys to pitch in here in a moment, but we also wanted to kind of have a sense of tribe together, a sense of support. And so we've been working towards developing something kind of like a community. We want to have a community 
where people can come and be, be accepted, even if they're very judgmental and critical and comparing a lot or not. And so Maria had this wonderful group that's called Thriving Together. And we're opening it up and we just really want to have this space to be, I grew up around a tribe. I grew up with aunts and uncles and, you know, grandparents and all this stuff. And I, the first eight years of my life, I felt like it didn't matter what I did. People were happy to see me and they were loving. Um, that's the feeling that, you know, Pam, my best friend. And so, you know, it's, I know I can go to her and say the most, what I would call less elevated things ever. And there's always been this acceptance. And when I've experienced that, my soul just uh, feels fluffy and I feel free. And it's healing, not because anybody's telling me anything, just because there's this extension of, of love. And so we're kind of opening that up. And I just wanted to share that with you. And I, I don't know, Marie and Katie, if you want to add anything else about that. Well, I think what you said is beautiful, Gabriela. Uh, so this is a Facebook group called Thriving Together. Um, and yeah, we just want to invite anyone to join and show up as you are, wherever you are up to. Um, Katie, you want to add anything to that? Katie? I was wondering if I did want to add anything to that. Oh, sorry, I couldn't see you. Oh, okay. Um, no, no, you'd be most welcome. Um, and we can play on there with comparison and what happens. <laughs> A space on social media where we can be honest about <laughs> what's going on for us. Um, no, uh, yeah, Christian, you don't have to join Facebook just for that. Um, but if you are on Facebook, do, do join us and we'll probably, we'll post future webinars on there and um, snippets of video from this and past webinars if you wanted to look at those too. So it's probably going to be a space where you can kind of engage with this kind of conversation. Mm. Yeah, a space that where we can support each other, right, wherever we are. And I actually wanted to say something in relation to what uh, Lily said. Uh, and is that the first the first webinar we did the three of us which we are just experimenting and playing when I finished that webinar I compare myself with the expectations I had of myself so I thought I did such a bad job I was not grounded I was all over the place I did a crappy job my goodness, let's not share this, right? So that's going on in my head. Gabriela shares, <laughs> Gabriela shares the webinar with her friend Pam. And it turns out that Pam has an insight. It's nothing to do with me, but it's, it, it, she has an insight listening to me. So how much we get in our own way that I was thinking I did such a bad job that I didn't want to share it. And then... I will be withholding that from Pam, right? That's so something fresh for herself. Again, not, not because of what I said, because of her listening, but you can say, actually, I'm not prepared, I'm not ready, I'm not good enough. And then you never know what impact you're going to have on other people. Yeah, so I just wanted to share that. <laughs> And um, for me, that's what's so lovely about this webinar um, and hopefully the Facebook group. But I'd, uh, yeah, it'd be great to have your contribution there to creating something similar. But what's so beautiful about 
this evening for me and listening and, and being fortunate enough to kind of be the third one of the three of us to say is that I could listen to all of you as well. So just the, what's possible when we engage with each other is, is without comparison in a space that is um, somewhere to show up as we are is, is really a beautiful thing. Um, it, it would be lovely to hear um, if that's been the case for you uh, before we sign off, how you've experienced this webinar. It would be nice to hear. So we are interested in thriving and we're interested in feeling free and experiencing joy and acceptance and, you know, a while back, I'm not a huge Facebook person, Facebook, um, you know, I don't participate a lot, but there was a post a while back that said, I love that you have high expectations for me, but I appreciate it even more when I don't meet them and you still love me and accept me. So we just really want to have a space where people can be however they are, however they're feeling, and there's just, you know, a welcome mat, per se. That's the intention of, of this uh, webinars and also of the Facebook group. So anyway, well, Sorry, Gabriela, I didn't hear that. Do you want to close things? Do you want to okay, yeah. I, <laughs> well, thank you everyone for joining and for spending this time with us. It's been really nice to see your faces for those of you who have camera on and seeing familiar faces. It's, uh, we really enjoyed this getting together with all of you. So we appreciate you showing up. And we are going to do another webinar at the end of May, uh, the, 20, the 25th of May. We don't have a topic yet. So is this something that um, you would like to explore to let us know? Otherwise we will come up with something, I'm sure. <laughs> and yes, thank you and hope, hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>